Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Seek NR. Today we are going to give an overview of The Batman by Grant Morrison Omnibus Volume 1. So grab your bat shark repellent and let's dive in. Over the past few decades, Grant Morrison has delivered some of the coolest, weirdest, and most unique stories in the world of comics. Collaborating with dozens of talented visual artists and solid editors, Grant Morrison wrote an eight-year Batman saga inspired heavily by Dark Knight stories from the 1950s, but still unlike anything many of us have read before. From 2005 to 2006, DC was going through a massive change as they were building up to a giant event written by Jeff Johns called Infinite Crisis. In the aftermath of that event, a lot of the major heroes that we all know and love took a year off from being superheroes. Superman, for example, lost his powers, Wonder Woman retired, and Batman went on a spiritual journey around the world, trying to find himself again after losing his way and becoming far too dark, darker than anyone could have imagined. In this omnibus, it collects almost three years worth of Batman stories written by Grant Morrison from 2006 to 2009. The book starts off with two issues of the 52 series, focusing on Bruce Wayne and his journey across the world to find himself. From here, we dive straight into the Batman and Son storyline that begins with a cop dressed in a Batman costume shooting the Joker in the head, moments before the real Batman could stop it from happening. Joker lives, of course, but is temporarily in a comatose state. This scares all of the other criminals in Gotham, because all they heard was that Batman shot the Joker. This makes for a very quiet Gotham City, and an almost useless Batman. That is, until Talia al Ghul arrives and introduces Bruce Wayne to the son he never knew he had, Damien. Grant Morrison has openly admitted that his initial concept was to kill Damien early on, but when fans reacted positively to the idea that Bruce now had a son who had been raised by his mother Talia and her father, Ra's al Ghul, Grant and DC Comics decided to keep the little hellion around. The omnibus also consists of the Clown at Midnight story, where Joker awakens from his coma and changes into a more lethal clown prince of crime. The Three Ghosts of Batman story, where Bruce discovers that the cop who was dressed as him that shot the Joker was actually one of three evil Batmen sent by an organization called the Black Glove to destroy the Bat and take over Gotham City. And the Black Casebook story, where Bruce and Tim Drake Robin team up to expose some police corruption and battle the second of the three evil Batmen. It's at this point in the omnibus that we jump decades into the future in a story called The Batman of Bethlehem, where we learn that one day Bruce will be murdered by the Black Glove organization, and Damien, his son, will be forced to take on the mantle of the Bat after making a deal with the devil and become the Batman of Gotham's future to finally put an end to the Black Glove and the third and final of the evil Batman. With that potential and horrific future looming ahead, we return to the present for a few more stories to wrap up this mighty hardcover. First is the Black Glove story, where Bruce and Tim team up with costume vigilantes from around the world in a murder mystery set on an isolated island, while Talia helps heal Damien's wounds after he suffered them from an explosion. Next up is a summary of the resurrection of Ra's al Ghul crossover that ran through the Bat books at this time, showing us the return of Damien's grandfather and longtime Batman nemesis, Ra's al Ghul, who died a few years prior in the comic books. Since the entire resurrection of Ra's al Ghul story wasn't written by Grant Morrison, only his issues are collected here, with two new pages drawn by Chris Burnham to help summarize the rest of the story's main beats so that the reader isn't too lost. If you think that's all the stories that this omnibus has to offer, you are dead wrong, my friend. Next up we have Joe Chill in Hell and Batman Dies at Dawn, a psychedelic but intense story of Batman not only battling his own psyche as it deteriorates, but also the Black Glove and their nefarious leader, Dr. Hurt, who has now unleashed his third and final evil Batman on Bruce. The penultimate chapter in this omnibus is Batman R.I.P. To avoid major spoilers, I'm going to skip over the Jezebel Jet romance and the mystery of Dr. Hurt's identity, because I encourage all of you to pick up all of these stories that I mentioned here and read them on your own. What I will say is that this story is a trippy, intense, and in my opinion, brilliant showdown between Batman, the Black Glove, and the Joker. Grant Morrison has always described Bruce as the ultimate survivor, and that's how he writes him. So when Bruce is left for dead, 
he mutters a phrase that jumpstarts his mind and gives him the strength to defeat his enemies. Zer N R, a phrase from an old Batman comic in the 1950s, which Grant Morrison lifted for his story as a way to explain that if Bruce's mind was ever compromised and his secrets were ever learned by his foes, that that phrase would trigger a backup personality, the Batman of Zer N R, and the imp known as Batmite would be there to keep his sane side of Bruce's memories still present, as an insane version of him took over his body. Grant says that Batman of Zer R is a Dark Knight with more Batman in the equation than Bruce Wayne, which is why he is so lethal and only reserved for this level of an emergency. In the end, Batman, Nightwing, Tim Drake Robin, Damian, Talia, the GCPD, and the international vigilantes that Batman had worked with on the island take back Gotham and stop Dr. Hurt and the Black Glove. Yet Dr. Hurt's body is never found, and Bruce goes from this nightmare to another, called Final Crisis. Final Crisis was written by Grant, but it is not collected in this omnibus. Instead, we get a one-page summary to show that as Darkseid takes over the world, Bruce finds a bullet that is covered in radion, which hurts and could possibly kill a new god like Darkseid. But after discovering it, Bruce is knocked out and placed into a machine by Darkseid's forces. The final story in this omnibus is called Last Rites, and it's the events that lead right up to Batman's death in Final Crisis. Last Rites takes us through the mind of Bruce Wayne, from the moment his parents were shot down in that alley to the defeat of the Black Glove. As the book closes, we get one more one-page summary, this time of the events of Bruce's death in Final Crisis. Now this I will spoil, so if you haven't read Final Crisis, I encourage you to skip to this time code. Darkseid was trying to clone Batman, the perfect human, and make an army of soldiers who had his level of determination and skill. But sadly, downloading Bruce Wayne's insane life into a clone body only drove the clones mad, killing nearly all of them. As Bruce makes his way to Darkseid, he loads a gun with the Radeon bullet. Bruce swore an oath to never use a gun again, to never be like the man who killed his parents. How ironic that the only weapon he had to kill a god was a bullet. Bruce loads his gun and pulls his trigger. Darkseid fires his Omega Beams. Both man and god fall. Those events happen in the pages of Final Crisis, in Absolute Edition, or in the trade paperback, which you can still pick up right now. But they are brushed over in a one-page summary in this, so you will still get that experience in a much more restricted scale. The final pages of this omnibus is a brief variant cover gallery that is worth checking out, and the binding on this book is top-notch, although sadly for this volume, a small piece already tore, but the book is still holding together fine for now. Still, the quality of the omnibus's printing and the story and art makes this edition a steal. Pick it up at your local comic shop or online before they go out of print. But fear not, if they do go out of print, just be sure to buy them as smaller trade paperbacks or in digital if you prefer that. Here are the issues that you'll need to track down to complete this story. I'm not much for rating, I'm more of a discussion guy, but if I had to rate this book, I would say with the amount of content you get for the price and with how well it's bound together, it's definitely a 9 out of 10 for me. So be sure to pick it up if you can. I hope you enjoyed this style of video. If so, leave a like and a comment on what your favorite moment is in this story. If you're new here, please subscribe and come back for more DC content in the next video. That's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. See you all in the future. Peace.